Hello, our talk is entitled An Introduction to Modern Computational Biology Through Microbiome Research for High School Students. My name is Josh Kangast, and I'm an assistant teaching professor in the Computational Biology Department at Carnegie Mellon University. And I'm Philip Kappa. I'm an associate teaching professor in the Computational Biology Department uh, in CMU School of Computer Science as well. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about our, our program today. Just for some some background, we teach a three week long full time program for high school students. They come in from around the country and we've even had a couple of international students. It's a fee based program, um, but it's, it's very competitive in terms of our applications. Uh, as I said, students come from all around and we fit in with an infrastructure or an ecosystem, I should say, uh, that CMU provides in terms of almost a dozen uh, programs that are aimed at, at rising seniors in high school whether it's drama or architecture or video game design. And so computational biology is, is one of these programs and we're proud to be a part of the CMU pre-college experience. Um, our students, we didn't know if how we would fit into this year one. Um, so we started this program in July 2019 and we had a target that we wanted a couple dozen students. We didn't know if we would reach that. And um, we were very happy to find that we had absolutely um, superlative students we actually essentially closed our application early because we reached a couple dozen uh, students who were very excited about mathematics and bio. Um, we did not require that they had any computational biology background before they came to us, nor did we require that they had done any programming before they came to us, as we had a, a short boot camp on, on programming as well as part of our program. So we wanted to talk a bit about the program, um, kind of how it is set up, what we wanted to do, um, and I think a large part of why we were very quickly popular is that we structured our program around doing not just a toy research pro problem with students, but a real research project uh, that had not been performed, which was the studying the microbiome of Pittsburgh's Three Rivers. And we were interested in working with our students to kind of figuring out what drives the variation. Is it weather or seasonality? Um, what about lo different locations within the rivers? as well as the fact that we have an opportunity to study the confluence of two rivers in Pittsburgh to see what happens after that point um, in, the, in, the, in terms of the geography of the rivers. So we have big picture goals for what we want to do with our students. First and foremost, um, and which is why we've put it at the very top there, is we want our students to have an academic uh, experience that is fun um, and that uses active learning, which I'll say, talk briefly about uh, shortly. We have uh, a very uh, strong, we want to have a very demand, a strong demand that students get to sample a real biological data set. They collect all their samples and then they do an end to end analysis where they apply the techniques in the laboratory and then they design programs that will solve uh, computational problems and then apply that to the real data that they, that they gather. Um, so, as part of that, we want them to appreciate that. In real biological research, computation is ubiquitous. Um, you know, a sub aim of that is that we want our students to write hundreds of lines of code on their own to, that's gonna be wound up applied to um, analyzing biological data. And then the final point is that we want this to be a challenge. We don't give grades. We don't have a lot of, we don't have individual assessments. The goals are big picture. The goals are for, to have an experience that students really cannot get anywhere else in the world. Um, that's outside of the standard high school biology or computer science curriculum and to appreciate that real science is about challenging oneself and we want our students to feel that challenge especially because so many of them are such superlative students that they don't probably get um, this challenge uh, often during high school. So um, how we structure have structured this is, is through active learning meaning having students do as much as possible that's certainly the case in the lab where they're collecting their own samples and then they're applying lab techniques in order to uh, capture biological data. But it's also true when downstream of that, we have them uh, kind of work in groups to uh, do short code challenges, come back together, give them the next code challenge and have them do as much of the programming on their own with TA and instructor guidance as possible. Getting student buy into this is really important. Understanding that we spent a lot of time structuring it in this way to make sure that every moment includes active learning. And so we point our students to real research results showing why we've uh, added active learning to our experience. So we point to, for example, uh, one PNAS paper from 2014, Freeman et al, 
showing that active learning boosts student performance by about half a standard deviation in STEM courses that have grading, as well as, as showing students that they're going to be more challenged and they may feel as a result of that that they aren't um, learning as much as they might in a, in a lecture-based classroom where it's easy to follow along and smile and nod, but you're not constantly tested on your, on your knowledge necessarily. And so pointing out that this is real research from just 2019 where students have the sentiment that they're not learning as much, while meanwhile they are actually performing better than they would in a traditional lecture. Um, so that's the setup for kind of a big picture of what we want to do. And Josh is going to talk about some of the details of how we set up um, the, the research program and, and what we found with our students. So take it away, Josh. So we uh, started this research program by uh, applying for a, a small grant and we received that grant and we used that grant to fund um, this program and this research program uh, across uh, different programs. So we have an, an undergraduate program and we actually incorporated this microbiome research into a fall 2018 uh, class. This is a, a picture of a couple of our students um, out in the Ohio River taking water samples and then uh, processing them. And then uh, here, this is our winter 2000, uh, so winter 2019 sampling. And in this case, um, students weren't too interested in, in sampling in January. And so it was just Philip and I doing the sampling. We were clearly enjoying it. And then in, in this one, this was uh, in May, but it was an absolutely frigid day. And um, the students were more interested in studying for finals than uh, joining us on this excursion. Uh, so we got samples for the spring and then in the summer we had the the pre-college program so this is a, a picture of all of our students before we um, boarded this vessel behind us so this is a uh, rivers of steel is a nonprofit organization that runs a, a science vessel in the pittsburgh area and so they uh, took us all around the rivers where we could uh, collect samples in the, the locations we were interested in and it was a, a very nice trip Okay, as far as the specific locations, uh, we chose these locations because they would allow us to uh, test for the effects of uh, the seasonality because we had different locations. We could also test for the effects of different locations and also uh, the confluence of the rivers. And then finally, as we were going along, we also collected data on water conditions like um, temperature and pH. All right. As far as the actual processing of the samples, so we, we filtered the biological material from the water and then uh, from those filters we were able to extract the DNA and then we sequenced that DNA with various methods and then we analyzed the sequenced DNA using algorithms the student built and uh, they were building these in the, the computational lab obviously. Okay. All right, so this is a uh, an overview of the experimental process. It's important to note that before, right there at the beginning of the uh, program, the students came in and in the computer lab, they received a uh, programming boot camp where they learned to program and go. And then in the wet lab, we did a uh, pipetting boot camp where they learned you know, the basic skills that were needed for both kinds of labs. Um, these are the specific activities and I've broken them out here into different categories. So, next slide. Um, so first we isolated bacteria and then diff did different tasks. So I'll tell you what we learned from these and uh, next slide. So for the isolated bacteria, uh, we, in the computational lab, we taught students about uh, sequence alignment and they actually implemented alignment algorithms and then we showed them BLAST. And so we did Sanger sequencing on bacteria that they isolated from the water samples and we found, uh, we identified 20 species that we isolated. Next slide. Uh, then we also did whole genome reconstruction and uh, computationally they implemented that an algorithm for that and they also did um, ORF finding and gene annotation and what was really interesting here is that um, one of the species of bacteria that we isolated was called Flectobacillus roseus. Um, it had never actually been fully sequenced before. It was only um, identified based on its 16S gene so we actually um, generated the full sequence of that uh, particular bacteria and we're in the process of uh, publishing that genome. 
Okay, then we also uh, did some tests for antibiotic resistance, and this gave us an opportunity to do uh, basic image analysis with the students. And just one, one basic result that we have that's obvious here is that uh, this particular bacteria, Bacillus uh, aria body, is um, resistant to sulfamethoxazole, as you can see in this image. Um, then we did analysis on uh, microbiomes. So we're looking at whole populations of bacteria from the river water samples. Computationally, we did um, alpha and beta diversity analysis. Uh, we also did principal coordinate analysis. And uh, from a conclusions perspective, uh, this plot is showing the primary conclusion, which is that um, the diversity of the microbiome is primarily driven by seasonality as opposed to uh, location, which is not a huge surprise, but we were, were able to demonstrate um, the analysis to come to that conclusion with the students. So a very important part of all this was that we wanted to make sure that students then had a chance to reflect on what they had done. Um, so as, as part of the, the three-week uh, program at the end, we had a final student presentation uh, to the students, parents, and, and families and guardians um, that lasted three full hours. So we wanted to make sure that every student had a chance to speak for a few minutes. Um, and they outlined end-to-end -end exactly what we had done for a lay audience uh, over the entire three weeks and compressed that down into three hours. So it's just a testament to how amazing our students were, uh, and they were just as enthusiastic at the end of the presentations as, as when we had started. And the other thing that we did um, was we asked them to tell us what they had learned. We thought that was the, the best thing, as well as for venues like this to explain, you know, kind of, we had these big picture goals, but what did students feel like they learned? Um, and we were expecting them to potentially give us some, some low-level answers, like how to use object-oriented programming if you're building a genome assembly or um, something, you know, how to pipette effectively and how to uh, carry out kind of uh, a, a certain aspect of some of the, the lab experimentation that we did. But we were amazed that in five minutes, uh, some of the things that our students said, that we would have been impressed with kind of a, a PhD holder being able to reflect on the nature of computational biology in such a way. So I'll just quickly read what they, what they said because I think it's the biggest uh, kind of keystone of our, our program. So biological data are messier than you think they will be, and that's not a problem. Heuristics are, are very valuable when dealing with real data because our problems aren't solvable by exact means. No model is perfect. Some problems may have a perfect theoretical solution that doesn't work at the scale of real data. Parameters are vital when building computational approaches, as we all know in bioinformatics, and they need to be tailored to the data set that we are using. Uh, fundamental topics of computer science, like programming, recursion, object-oriented programming, et cetera, et cetera, are everywhere in practice. That was a great one, and you're very happy. We often have a trade-off between the accuracy of an algorithm and its precision, or between the accuracy of an algorithm and its speed. I mean, that's a very high level one uh, computationally that we were very thrilled that they saw. Uh, we need precisely formulated computational problems in order to answer biological questions. Biology and CS aren't distinct fields, and there are major opportunities for people who can understand both. That's a great one for comp bio as well. When solving any problem, we should focus on the big picture first and we can later zoom in on details. And finally, often biological research is indirect. So we have to answer questions about things that we cannot directly observe or maybe never will be able to directly observe. Um, so normally that might be how we would end our, our talk because um, we were so happy with them being able to reflect on that. Um, but uh, Josh is gonna talk a little bit about kind of how we've torn down the program, especially in response to a pandemic, but also with respect to a few other things as we look toward the future. Okay, so from, uh, for the pandemic edition of the pre-college program, um, obviously we had to make it an entirely remote program. And so one of the things that allowed us to do was to double the size of our program. So we're almost double it, we're up to 51 students. Um, we also saw that the students did very well in the, uh, last summer's version but we wanted to give them an opportunity to do more um, and so we gave them the programming boot camp uh, beforehand so they did that as prep work before coming to our program and so far that uh, seems to have been a great success um, unfortunately we can't do lab work because it's remote and so we're using the uh, data from uh, last summer with the summer students uh, we've also 
um, improve the program by making uh, a lot of the programming tasks more group based. And so the students are actually uh, very actively involved in doing the programming in small groups with each other. Uh, we also have more TAs. So we have five TAs this year. And that really helps to uh, improve the interactions between the students. And then the students get a lot of uh, attention from uh, their instructors. And then um, yeah, the, the coronavirus definitely provides us an opportunity to uh, teach students about active, an active research area that has enormous relevance to the world right now. So it's been uh, a great opportunity for that. Um, another part of this that's important to us is that we're consistently trying to improve um, gender parity and diversity. So um, this year we have actually added uh, a number of scholarships as a result of a generous donation to the Compound Department. And uh, we've improved our diversity, but there's still uh, more to do. And then in the future, we have a, a number of improvements we intend to uh, add to the program. So one of them is that uh, CMU is, has definitely a strength in automated science. So I actually have a, a robot as my background that we may be able to use as part of the uh, program in the future. Um, we're also definitely working with partners within the university and in the uh, local community to help us improve the diversity and, and gender parity of our program. And then we're, we're always looking for uh, real research topics that we can uh, tailor to a level that high school students can handle. And that means both within the lab and in, in terms of the computational analysis that uh, those projects require. Uh, so to close, we just we have to acknowledge um, all the people that have helped us uh, with the program directly. So we have all of our TAs from uh, last year and uh, during the current program. And then we have Sam Madrinich, who is our program coordinator. We definitely couldn't have done this without her either. And then ultimately, uh, we we do this work because we, we enjoy the students and um, we also uh, really get a lot of benefit out of uh, teaching them. And so if not for the students, you know, we wouldn't be doing it. So we, we give our thanks to them as well. All right, and we wanna thank you for listening to us.